because you're doing what? Cellular respiration. So we always have water and carbon dioxide in cells. There's some chemistry with regard to, to water and carbon dioxide. Now, it would never occur in a cell simply be, spontaneously because it is an incredibly inorganic reaction and it takes a whole lot of activation energy to occur. So naturally occurring, this reaction wouldn't happen. But if we catalyze this reaction with an enzyme, we can join these two together. That enzyme is called carbonic anhydrase. If you take carbon dioxide and water and put them together, you get this. And this is carbonic acid. Okay. Now, what do acids do? Is this being formed in water? Yeah. yeah. What do acids do when you put them in water? They increase the H plus concentration. So there's going to be some dissociation here. In fact, there are two points where this could lose hydrogen. It, under the conditions of cell cellular chemistry, it'll never reach the second, what do they call that point where you lose hydrogen? I can't remember, but isoelectric or something. There's another point at which you would lose another one, but it won't happen, but this happens readily. That will happen. So if you have a cell that has carbonic anhydrase, this chemistry is going to be occurring all the time. Now, why would you maybe want this chemistry to occur? Well, sometimes you want a source of hydrogen ions, right? Like if I'm in the stomach, lining the stomach, what's the pH of, stomach, of gastric juice? Incredibly acidic, right? So in certain cells in the stomach, this is taking place, and I'm pumping this hydrogen out. And what's happening to the pH in here? Yeah, it's getting lower, right? Concentration of hydrogen ions are going up, pH is dropping. So this is basically, I'm just showing you how do gastric cells make acid. This is one way they do it. They also, by the way, can make hydrochloric acid. Certain cells, parietal cells, can make hydrochloric acid and secrete that. Okay. But we can also do this chemistry here. Now, sometimes we want to secrete the buffer. Right? Say this was a cell, rather than being a cell lining the stomach, say this is a cell in the pancreas. Pancreatic juice is very basic, right? So it needs a source of the base. This is a base, right? This is a base. This is the conjugate base of this acid. So this is a base. So if I have this chemistry occurring in a cell in the pancreas, what can I dump into pancreatic juice? The base. And I can make it a buffer. So you see, acid-base chemistry, which is what we're just doing here, by the way, right? Acid-base chemistry, really important for cells to be able to maintain proper pH, either to prevent pH change by buffering things. This would be a buffer, by the way, if I just secrete that in blood plasma. I'm buffering blood plasma. Or to be able to actively change the pH of the secretion, make it more acidic, make it more basic. Okay. We can do that. And so, what is the end? So, does every cell in your body express the gene? Well, let me ask this way. Does every cell in your body have the gene to produce carbonic anhydrase? Yes. yes, every cell in your body has every gene in your body. Does every cell in your body express that gene to produce carbonic anhydrase? No, because if it did, we would be monkeying around with the pH of all the fluids around every cell in our body, and we don't want to do that, except in cases where we have to. So, I know this sounds silly, but why is it that cells in the stomach express this gene? Well, the easy answer is they need to. Right? They need to be able to affect this pH, so they need to affect that. Now, we're going to see this carbonic anhydrase here, not just in cells in the stomach. It's vital, vital, vital inside of red blood cells, we'll see. It's vital inside of other capillaries in the body. Um, so we'll see it being expressed in certain places uh, throughout the rest of the term. But then here it's just being used to affect the pH of a local part of the uh, uh, digestive system.